Hi everyone this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music in this lesson we are going to explore ways to build harmonic movements or chord progressions but not with many chords with just one chord so it could be either a major chord or a minor chord in this video in this uh, tutorial we'll pick a minor chord i tend to like minor more and minor gives you a lot more versatility in my opinion to build a lot more things so first off we are going to pick a minor chord let's learn the minor chord so we'll take c minor for this tutorial so let's first check it out c minor is c e flat g that's your root position e flat g c first inversion g c e flat that's your second inversion second first and root and what we are going to do is take this take one of these inversions and just stick with this we are not going to touch this chord so it's just pretty much going to be this static chord along with a few embellishments a few cadence cadences a few intervals a few bass bass movements which are roots of the chords or even a few bass lines which can become very rememberable so before we get started it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications let's get cracking also my handwritten notes for this entire lesson are waiting for you on our patreon page do consider getting yourselves a copy let's get cracking so first of all you take c minor and we are going to pivot we are never going to change the third because the third of a triad is what gives it its emotion so the third needs to be static one more of the three notes either the root or the fifth will also be static and that leaves us with either the root or the fifth to be dynamic to float around so if i take the root and the fifth to be constant fifth is going to float so what's the very next note after the fifth the sixth flat or the augmented fifth next you get the major sixth which is the a again you have the augmented fifth perfect fifth so it's pretty much what they do for the james bond theme isn't it of course you can keep going It's pretty good. Dropping can even drop it to the diminished. Don't want major third. That'll clash with the minor. So all of this works. there's a lot of harmonic movement but it's still kind of a c minor chord isn't it which is one note floating around now <clears throat> keeping the root consistent along with the third we had a lot of fun with the fifth let's now keep the third and the fifth consistent and float around with the root now you can also go up but that's not so common so we'll just go descending na 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 basically still a c minor now you can make 
make this a lot more catchy bringing out a more rememberable hook w- with your playing by aligning the notes inconsistently or using some accents or phrasing it differently so instead of doing 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 i can perhaps divide it as 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 let's try that out Immediately it becomes a bit catchy. You kind of remember the song by this. A lot of Latin or salsa music could be built this way. Of course, if you get bored with this, you can go to the four minor chord. back to maybe the root so you can also practice this and it sh- you should practice this on the different inversions of the c minor chord as well so if you take c minor this way and then uh, wish to start floating remember you float the fifth or the root you do not float the third so thirds here different flavor because i am accessing different notes and then maybe the second inversion So that was about floating notes you can get by with a lot of songs a lot of popular movie themes you can even compose something this way they tend to call this the line cliche movement the beatles do this a lot in their songs they do it with a major chord as a pivot like something they also do it with a minor chord as pivot like while my guitar gently weeps so there's a lot of things in there a uh, lot of vocabulary Uh, to be developed by just listening to the beatles they you can learn almost every kind of chord progression out there so they've written hundreds of songs now moving forward as i mentioned the goal of the lesson is to keep this the same now what if you have a chord progression let's say um one minor c minor uh e flat major could be a three flat major uh um then your 7 flat major could be b flat and then some other basically minor chord progression so what i am doing here is i am not playing the whole chord i am not changing the chord at all i am just holding my shape in the right hand and playing only the roots of those chords so if it's c minor Play C. If it's a D minor seventh flat five, which is a chord of the C minor scale, just play D. No problem. Kind of works. So if it's E flat, just hold your shape and you can play E flat. Then F. Remember, I'm highlighting C minor. That's G. A flat major forms a nice A flat major seven. You can even do an A minor seventh flat five by just playing C minor there and doing A here. Then. B flat, the C minor on top. You can even do a nice B, so it's very chaotic sound, and then back. So literally any note in the bass except for the major third sounds a bit uh, annoying if you ask me. If you like it, try. So you can do any chromatic note. So if you have a progression, or if you're building a progression, just keep the minor chord static. maybe it's boring to just keep playing like this so let's just do some arpeggios
playing the same chord holding in the right hand if you want to make a groove out of this you can maybe take up the andalusian cadence it's already so many songs like hit the road jack don't you come back no more no more no more no more hit the road jack don't you come back no more what else i'm feeling good bad at me boom 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 but fine hi you know how i feel it's new dawn it's a new dawn na 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 songs using this while my guitar gently weeps can also be played like this along the lines of bass movement you don't just have to play the roots of the chords you can also build a bass line like just sing a melody and play it in the bass it's as simple as that for example bum pa bum pa bum traditional bass line all with the static minor you know and the bass line already highlights the 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 harmonic nature of the music so you you, you might as well get a catchy thing going on in the bass rather than just the usual chord progression so you can do a melody line or something groovy or funky So we've covered floating notes alongside two of the other anchors of the minor chord. We've also covered bass movement, keeping this entire chord static in the right hand. Let's now do a couple more things before we move on. This is something I call floating thirds. This is used a lot when building some of the thematic stuff for a, a motion picture or something. So if you take C minor. and decide which scale you're going to work on if you're working on the harmonic minor first of first of all figure out thirds of the harmonic minor you can check the notes so there are seven thirds c e flat d f e flat g f a flat g b a flat c b d c flat of course the 6th degree has a minor third as well as a major third so it's a very interesting scale the harmonic minor so when you're floating the third what you do is you keep one of the other note you keep the other note static so if i keep my root static i'll be floating in the top in the upper direction c minor this is my home base there we go you get some neighboring options there again the bass can can do its own thing quite like that 
And now if you feel you're running out of space, like your hand fingers are stretching too much, use some inversions. You can just re-invert the chord. Let's say you play C minor like this or like this. So if you're playing C minor like this and you don't want to move C, There we go. So it's still kind of C minor. Again, C is at the uh, bottom, but you get access to the other thirds. If you're on top, there you go. And you remember, you don't have to anchor only the root. You can also anchor the fifth. So it's still pretty much C minor, but now we are floating thirds, which I think makes it very, you can compose a lot of movie scores or, you know, any kind of background music for whatever requirement with a simple thought process, no theory, no rules, no regulations, just one minor chord, whichever minor, pull it out of a hat of 12. There's just 12 minor chords in there, right? And then, yeah, float the thirds. So that's about what I had for the lesson. Let's just recap. First of all, we picked a chord. We picked a triad, a minor triad, C minor. We looked at all the three inversions. But then we pivoted two notes. We pivoted always the third and then the root or the fifth and then floated around the other one. To get you that James Bond vibe or that line cliche movement. Then we said we'll just keep the minor chord just static on top and then build some progressions. Just by taking the chord roots and moving that in the bass, you can also build some bass lines. And last but not least, we looked at floating thirds to give you a movie, movie-like vibe. Right, so do consider getting my notes on the uh, Patreon page. You'll find the link in the description. We've also uh, given you some related videos in our description as well, so you could watch that. Uh, thanks a ton for watching the video. Don't forget to hit give the video a like. Leave us a comment with something you'd like us to do in the future. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. And I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.